Hi there, I'm David Collings. I'm a technical director at Arcadis, and today I'm going to talk to you about carbon footprint benchmarking data for shell and spatial structure buildings. <coughs> To limit carbon emissions, we need to understand where and how much we currently use. In this presentation, previously published carbon data by myself and others on buildings is sifted for shell and spatial structures. <coughs> uh, some definitions. Uh, the carbon that I'm looking at is the capital carbon which is the product and construction process carbon used to build the structure. It doesn't take into account the carbon during the life of the structure, so that it, during use, uh, nor does it take into account uh, end of life carbon, uh, either savings or additions. So it is capital carbon, the general, construction carbon associated with the capital cost of the building. Uh, previous work, this is a, a plot from uh, my 2020 paper that's in the structural engineer. Um, there's a clear correlation, positive correlation between carbon and area. The bigger we make things, the more carbon we put in. Uh, generally, the data was showing around about uh, 0.9 tonnes of carbon per square metre of building, but with a significant variation. Other work um, on spatial structures, there's quite a few papers that give um, weights uh, of steel for various uh, space structures, and I've plotted them here. Um, and you can see that in general, there's a trend of increasing material with SPAN. So there's likely to be uh, a similar trend of increasing carbon. Uh, there's also been some work on looking at the amount of cladding material that goes with um, the structure. And here uh, I've plotted the data from a couple of papers and showing the increase in material uh, with cladding. So estimation of carbon based on that uh, data, I've gone through and calculated the carbon and you can see that in general, uh, especially towards the large, the, the larger space structures, they're very much similar to uh, conventional buildings may be s slightly lower. Um, towards the smaller, you can see that uh, there seems to be a bit more of a, of a differentiation between space structures and conventional structures. Uh, and this is just the same data, but uh, it's just the structural content rather than the whole building carbon content. And uh, you can see upper area, we're getting towards uh, one tonne per square metre for very large space structures. But when we're down towards the smaller buildings, we've got a significant increase. So, you know, the rate is, is, is a quarter of that of the uh, larger structures. Uh, normalised carbon, um, normalising it, you can see the range really um, from uh, a few hundred kilograms per square metre up to uh, over three uh, tonnes per square metre for some structures. So significant range of normalised carbon. And this one uh, is looking at the difference between um, the carbon content of uh, the roof structure, the, sh the, sh the spatial roof and the rest of the building. 
and you can see that the carbon footprint of the spatial structure is generally dwarfed by the rest of the building, by the substructures or significant cladding elements. So in conclusion, the data shows the positive correlation between carbon span and area and the data indicates that the carbon footprint of the spatial structure is dwarfed by the building substructures the associated conventional buildings or by significant cladding elements <clears throat> hence when optimizing shell and spatial structures we must think of the whole building and not just the spatial structure alone and shell and spatial structures do show a, carb, a lower carbon footprint compared with conventional structures, indicating that they do have a place in helping us towards our net zero requirement to limit future global warming. Thank you.